Watching these movies will not teach you much about the real world. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 unrealistic expectations from teen movies. Welcome, my friends, to the party that never ends. <laughs> yeah. At least until my folks get back from Vegas. <laughs> Who are all these people? For this list, we're looking at all of the things that happen in teen movies that don't reflect how things actually are. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. The seconds you could kill, I'm here. There's no need to be scared of me. Number 10, everyone fits into a clear category. One of the tropes that is present in the majority of teen movies is the idea that all teens embody common stereotypes. Asian nerds, cool Asians, varsity jocks, unfriendly black hotties, girls who eat their feelings, girls who don't eat anything. There's the jock, the mean cheerleader, the nerd, the band geek, the bad boy, and many more. But in reality, people are usually much more complex than that and defy easy categorization. But what we found out is that each one of us is a brain. And an athlete. And a basket case. A princess. And a criminal. Does that answer your question? Not all athletes are intellectually inferior, not everyone who plays an instrument is a dork, and most importantly, the majority of real-life teenagers can't just be squeezed into a one-dimensional framework. And this one time, we all lost our music, and we were supposed to play this song, but we didn't know it. So we just made it up. More modern movies are definitely improving on this, but we've still got a long way to go. Number 9. No one has to do homework If you're currently in high school, you know that most of your free time is taken up by homework. In real life, studies show that teens do up to 17 and a half hours per week of homework. That's like a part-time job. And yet, in movies, it seems that they have endless time for long phone chats, hanging out in cool cafes, and even large-scale musical numbers. Also, in fiction, teens who play sports or do extracurricular activities still seem to have a bunch of time on their hands, despite the fact that theoretically most of their daytime hours should be accounted for. Number 8. Everyone is in a relationship all right, you need to make this your new background. So what's your new background? Girl, come on. You know I already got it. In real life, teens may be interested in romantic relationships, but much of the time they're too busy with school and their friends to get into serious partnerships. In movies, however, it seems like there are tons of long-term couples who have stuck it out for years, and more importantly, that just about everyone dates seriously. Dion and her boyfriend Murray are in this dramatic relationship. I think they've seen that Ike and Tina Turner movie just too many times. Now I have to say to her, Dee, why do you put up with it? You could do so much better. While there are definitely people out there who focus on their boyfriend or girlfriend in high school, there are also many examples of people who didn't date properly until they were in college. You don't think that we mesh well. <laughs> I was like, why am I even listening to you to begin with? You're a virgin who can't drive. Number seven, teens do grand romantic gestures. When they do actually get into relationships, most teens are awkward and have a hard time expressing their feelings at all, let alone doing it in significant or public ways. What are you doing? Something I should have done a long time ago. In movies, however, it seems like teenagers are always willing to put their hearts on their sleeves and risk embarrassment in front of their peers in order to tell the object of their affection that they love them. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. When we were in high school, we would have swooned if someone just said they liked us, let alone doing it with a big romantic gesture. Number 6. Stalking is charming Things may be a little different today, but for decades it was seen as acceptable, or even romantic, to basically stalk someone. Oh my god. Jane. What is it? It says psycho next door! There are many examples in movies of guys aggressively pursuing women who have made it clear that they're not interested, or even doing creepier things like taking photos of them secretly or watching them sleep through their windows. 
In teen movies, this kind of behavior is often rewarded with the two people involved dating. But you can bet that in real life, if someone was peering into your window at night, you wouldn't be thrilled about it. Hey! What are you doing? Hey, you can't do that! I'll pay you when I get down, Tommy. I'm Noel Calhoun. So? So it's really nice to meet Allie. you. Who is this guy? I don't know. Number five, teens dress nicely. Why is it that teenage girls in movies are frequently seen in high heels and miniskirts? That new girl moved here from Africa. I saw Katie Heron wearing army pants and flip-flops, so I bought army pants and flip-flops. Not only do those outfits defy dress codes everywhere, but they're also just not that realistic. Getting ready for school on time is a challenge on the best of days, but putting together a coordinated and fashion-forward outfit just doesn't happen for most people. In reality, there are a lot of teens in jeans and t-shirts or even loungewear in the hallways. Unless their parents are super wealthy, most high schoolers just simply don't have the budget to dress like that. Oh no! That's not what you do yet. No. <laughs> Put your arms through. Put your arms through them. You know what I mean? No. No, no. Oh. <laughs> wow. That looks amazing. I know. <laughs> Number four, the dances are amazing. The high school dances we remember involved a half-empty gymnasium, a crappy sound system, and mediocre lighting. But if you only knew about high school dances from teen movies, you'd think they all featured live music, incredible over-the-top decor, and teenagers dressed to the nines. Hey, little girl, take me off the shell. Cause it's hot every fuck playing with yourself. Maybe there are some schools out there where there are committees putting tons of effort into decorating for big themed parties, but we've never encountered them in the real world. Realistically, we can't imagine most schools having the budget for parties like this. Number three, all parties are ragers. The parties that we've seen in teen movies make us envious to this day, because if we recall, there was nothing like that going on when we were in high school. You call it a party? In film, teenagers always seem to be able to throw massive raging parties where half the school shows up, whether they want them to or not, and there are kegs, bumpin' music, and sick dancing. In real life, it's pretty tough to pull something like that off, even if your parents are out of town, without having some very real consequences. Oh, and to get to these parties, teens are often sneaking out of their bedroom windows, which hardly ever goes smoothly in the real world. Number two, there's no adult supervision. We get that some things have to happen in movies to make the plots more interesting, and obviously it would be difficult to write a teen movie if the parents were constantly meddling in everything their kids did. Honey, you ignore the house rules, you will stay home with your grandma and help her sort wigs while the rest of us go to Hawaii. Without you. But sometimes it seems ridiculous how oblivious parents are in teen movies. Letting their teenagers sneak out, have parties, skip school, drink, and much, much more without ever noticing. Old school. Great. What's that, like code for something? Oh my god, Dad? I'm a virgin. Ah, the, 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 the. okay, good. You'd better believe that real life parents are a little more observant and would totally catch us doing pretty much any of this stuff. I love you, sweetie. I'm too. And me, 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 me. Call if you need us. They bought it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, everyone is insanely attractive. The most obvious way in which teen movies differ from reality is simply how hot everyone is. Just relax. Forget about all those faces out there and just imagine that we're back at our school, in our gym, just doing our thing. Be fine. Real life teenagers have acne and braces and are often going through awkward phases where they're definitely going to regret their fashion and beauty choices. So why is it that in movies everyone is always flawlessly quaffed and drop dead gorgeous? First of all, I'd just like to thank all of you who voted for me, okay? <laughs> you did the right thing. We get it, it's nice to watch attractive people on screen, but it definitely creates an unrealistic expectation for what teenagers should look like. Imagine what they say about you. They don't even know I exist. Ew! <laughs> Stalkerazzi at three o'clock. <laughs> the white zone is for cool people only! No geeks. <laughs> Luckily, current movies are changing this trend, adding more diversity in characters' appearances. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.